Hi guys, this is your girl Wakeji Kamore and welcome to Reflections by Wakeji Kamore. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we are going to be looking at 2 Chronicles chapter 20, which is a continuation of just King Jehoshaphat and the things that he did when he was king. The good things, the bad things, the uh, mostly good things actually, but the bad thing he did, ilikuwa <laughs> ilimramba back at the end of his life and i'll show you how guys so anyway in this chapter if you again if you haven't read the chapter imagine pause and read the chapter for yourself please please appa we just do things the right way you read the chapter for yourself first and then you come and listen to the summary and the lessons that i have picked because at that point you will have understood what is happening in the story and you probably have your own lessons um you know picked up from the chapter because god speaks to you as well All right so in this chapter Jehoshaphat, who had experienced peace for a very long time, is now at a point where he is about to be attacked. And it is not just uh, attacked by, you know, <laughs> small, small people. He was uh, being uh, almost attacked by the armies of Moabites, the Ammonites, and some of the Meunites. Meunites. Meunites had declared war against um, Jehoshaphat. And you know, they had a vast army that was marching against them. And at this point, Jehoshaphat was terrified. The Bible says that he was terrified. He was overwhelmed. He was afraid. He didn't know what to do. And so he went to the Lord and he begged the Lord for guidance, which is a great, good thing. Tick. Tick for Jehoshaphat for going to the Lord. Tick for Jehoshaphat for trusting in the Lord and being finding solace at the Lord, in the Lord as the first solution not the second not the third not oh after we've been beaten now we've gone to the lord no like now at this point where he really needs help he needs to know what to do he goes to the lord and he prayed to the lord and he says oh god of our ancestors you alone are god in heaven and earth you're the ruler of the kingdom of earth you're powerful you're mighty and no one can stand against you he goes ahead to tell god or to remind god or to remind himself of the things that god has had done before it was like you already drove out these people who lived in this land and you gave us this land to live in it forever. But now these guys are here. They are trying to, you know, they are trying to attack us. See the armies of the Ammons, the Moab, Moabs, the Mount Seers are here and they, they want to take us out of this land that you have given unto us. And he was like, oh Lord, our God, won't you stop them for us like stop them for us and he goes on to say we are powerless against this mighty army and that is that is about to attack us he goes on to say we do not know what to do but we are looking to you for help that for me is my favorite verse in this whole chapter which is verse 12 he says oh our god won't you stop them we are powerless against this mighty um that is about to attack us we do not know what to do but we are looking for you to you for help my question for you my reflection question for you from this chapter is what do you do when you are overwhelmed what do you do when you face a crisis what do you do when you are afraid what do you do when you're terrified about the things that are happening in your life you're terrified about you know someone is sick and you're like me i'm terrified that they would die what do you do when you are terrified when you are afraid when you are overwhelmed by the situations in your life when you're overwhelmed by the things you know financial you know financial situation in your life uh you know relationships in your life when you're terrified by the tasks ahead of you the things that need you or the things that need your attention and you're just terrified for me this is our cue verse 12 is our cue go to the lord and tell the lord mimi i am powerless without you i do not even know what to do in this situation but i am looking to you for help i think that for me that is like the most amazing thing god can hear from us I think God is just like, oh, this is so good. She's looking at me for help. And imagine God never disappoints. When you go to God and you tell God, God, you are my plan A, my plan B, all the way to Z. You are my plan. I am looking to you for help. I'm looking to you for guidance. I'm looking to you for wisdom. I'm looking to you for counsel. I'm looking to you for even just supernatural healing. I am looking to you for just you to help me out of this crisis. Me, Mrs. Winita Fanyaji. Me, I've come to you and I'm looking to you for help and I need you to help me. 
The Bible says that the Lord actually responded. And it says, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Do not be and discouraged by this mighty army. Do not be discouraged by this financial debt. Do not be discouraged by this sickness. Do not be discouraged by these tasks. Do not be discouraged by the fact that things are just going snege nege. Do not be discouraged by anything that you're facing in your life. For the battle is not yours, but God's. This is exactly what the Lord said to these people. He said, do not be discouraged, do not be afraid, for the battle is not yours, but the Lord says it is his battle. And trust you me, the Lord does not get involved in battles that he, he, he is going to lose. The Lord never loses any battle. He's never lost any battle. He doesn't have a track record of losing any battle that he gets involved in. So be encouraged. And my challenge to you is that every single time you face a challenge, every single time you face a crisis, every single time you feel overwhelmed, you feel frightened, you feel scared, you feel, you know, uncertain, go to the Lord and tell him, hey, God, missing our option, you are my plan. And I'm here, I don't know what to do, and I'm looking for you for help. And the Lord will not disappoint you, and the Lord will always help you. All right, so it came to that the Lord helped them win this battle and they took home so much plunder. Yani wali, wali loot from their enemies, so much plunder that it was almost uncountable. But the thing that we see at the end of this chapter, which is pretty, pretty sad. Uh, I mean, it says that Jehoshaphat was a good king in verse 32, that he was a good king, that he's followed in the ways of his father Asa, who was a good king at the beginning, and he did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight. Unfortunately, even with all the all, like going to the different cities to teach people about obeying the Lord and the law of the Lord, he did not 100% succeed in removing all the pagan shrines in, the, in Israel. But he is referred to as a good king. So at the end of his reign, it says in verse 33, sometimes later, King Jehoshaphat of Judah made an alliance with King Ahaziah of Israel. Let's pause there. Who is King Ahaziah? King Ahaziah is the son of Ahab. Unakumbuka Ahab, who now are the in-laws with um, Jehoshaphat because King Ahab's daughter was married by King Jehoshaphat's son. So they made an ally. So now they are family. Whether they like it or not, they are family by marriage. So they, there's a lot alliance by just the fact that you guys are family. So now you guys are family and there's just an alliance that is there, whether you like it or not. But King Ahab died and King Ahaz Ahaziah became the son of King Ahab, who is Ahaziah, became the king. And Joshua is still king at this point and he made allies with King Ahaziah. And the Bible says that they made um, uh, allies with this guy who was very wicked. Ahaziah was a very wicked king, just as wicked as his dad was. And together they build a fleet of trading, of ships, but they, because they have... But the, the Bible says that because um, King Joshua, who was a good king, had made allies with this wicked king, the Lord destroyed their work. The Lord destroyed whatever it is that they were doing. The ships that they were trying to, to build and the, the ships that they were going to pick things from different places, they never came out of sea because the Lord destroyed them at sea. One of the things that I realized from this alliance that uh, King Jehoshaphat made with this family of Ahab is that sometimes we make mistakes and those mistakes we, we put ourselves in hot soup and now we are not ever able to remove ourselves from that situation. This guy King Jehoshaphat who was a very good king allowed his son to go and marry the daughter of King Ahab and from that point there's just an alliance we became family with a very wicked family. A good family became families or became allies by marriage with a very wicked king. And that was an alliance that King Jehoshaphat was never able to remove himself from. And it cost the, the things that they were trying to do together. Every time they would try to do something together, it would just not work because the Lord was like me, I'm not for this ally. I'm not for this, you know, relationship you guys have created for this treat you guys have created. I'm not for it. So the Lord never allowed their, their alliances to succeed. And then you can see even from when Joshua and King Ahab went to fight to regain um, Gilead for the Israel kingdom, 
King Ahab died in that in that battle. And now this, they have he has made an alliance with the son of King Ahab. They are trying to put ships together so they can go and you know pick things from different nations. And those ships never make it out of sea because God destroyed them. God was like, no, Mr. Q make alliance now to at all. These are wicked people. They are pagan idol worshipping God. So let's be very careful about the alliances that we make. Let's be very careful about the relationships that we get into, especially relationships that you can't come out of. Things to do like with marriage. You can't just come out of marriage because you've realized, oops, the Lord doesn't want me to now be here. And you're already married to that person, unfortunately. So let's be very careful about the alliances that we make. Let's be very careful about the permanent relationships that we are into or we get into because we may never come out of those relationships and if it's an alliance that God is against we may never succeed in those relationships thank you very much for listening I do hope that you have learned something from this chapter and see you tomorrow